Stan Gibalisco here with installment number six of the Logarithms in a Nutshell saga. As promised, I'm going to talk about relative intensity of disturbances and how we can use logarithms to express that. If you have, say, a Say the sun shining on a flat surface directly, perpendicularly, and suppose that that surface is a square meter. Sunlight produces quite a lot of power per square meter. We can put solar cells on a flat surface and extract some of that power, but not really that much of it. But the fact of the matter is, uh, quite a lot of power Quite a lot of watts of sunlight will fall on a square meter of surface area. I don't know exactly how many. The watt is the standard unit of power. Okay, so suppose that we have um, one watt per square meter of visible light shining on a surface. Then we double that, we get two watts per square meter. 10 watts per square meter is 10 times as much light power. And so on and so on. That's very simple. That is the actual light power. Light power actually per unit area light power per unit area. That is an absolute, a linear quantity that we can easily define. But, if we double the amount of light power, say from, oh, let's just say 100 watts per square meter of, of visible light. That's how intense the visible light is. A hundred watts of visible light fall on a square meter. If we increase that to 200 watts per square meter, in absolute terms that's twice as much power, but we're not going to see it that way. We're not going to perceive it as twice as bright. Here's what's going to happen. We perceive, well, move this over a little bit. We perceive a change in power from a starting level of P sub 1 to a starting level of P sub 2, visible light power per unit area. We perceive that change not as P1 increasing to P2, but as the logarithm of this ratio. So if P2 is twice P1, we perceive the change in proportion to the logarithm. In fact, the logarithm of a power ratio like that is a unit called the bell. B-E-L. I honestly don't know where that comes from, but that is what we use as a benchmark unit. So, if P sub 2 equals 200 watts per square meter, P sub 1 is 100 watts per square meter, then that's the logarithm of 2 and that is approximately equal to 0 0.301. So if we double the power, that is an equivalent of 0 0.301 bell. If we increase the power, say, from 100 watts per square meter to 1,000 watts per square meter, then that is the 10 to 1 ratio of power. The logarithm of 10 is 1, so that's 1 
bell. So a unit of one bell is a tenfold increase in power. If we go from 100 watts per square meter to 10,000 watts per square meter, that's a 100 to 1 power increase. The logarithm of 100 is 2, so that's 2 bells. Okay, well a bell is a kind of an unwieldy and large unit. So they have invented a unit called the decibel. The prefix multiplier deci means one-tenth. So a decibel is one-tenth of a bell. All right, so instead of a, when we have, the, okay, let's say we go back and look at this again. One hundred watts per square meter increases to two hundred watts per square meter. The log of that is 0.301. Remember that was 0.301 bell. Okay, but to define decibels, okay, remember a, a decibel is a tenth of a bell, so this must be 3.01 decibels. 3.01 decibels or decibel. Decibel is commonly abbreviated DB, small d, capital B. But we need to multiply this here by 10 in order to get decibels. So here's the general formula. We call an increase in power gain. 2 to 1 increase in power is a gain factor of 2 to 1. Say from 100 to 200 watts per square meter, the gain is 2. From 100 to 500 watts per square meter, the gain is 5. But when we want to express the gain in decibels, We do it like that. We take the power per unit area ratio, take the logarithm, and then multiply by 10. So we can just use an example. I'm just going to use two examples. Let's go from 100 watts to 400 watts per square meter. So the gain in decibels is 10 times the logarithm of 4. 0 .00 if you want to go to significant digits. When you find this logarithm with your calculator, you're going to find that it's 0 0.602 10 times 0 0.602 is 6.02 decibels. That is the gain that we get if we quadruple the power per unit area. Well, let's try another one. Let's suppose that instead of increasing the power, we decrease it. We start out with 100 watts, we decrease it to only 50 watts. So the logarithm of 50 one hundredths is the logarithm of 0 
five zero. Remember, 50, we only had two significant figures. The log of 0 0.50, if we work that out, we find that the logarithm of 1 half, or 0 0.50, is minus 0 0.301. Let's just say 0 0.500, 50.0 watts. From 100.0 to 50.0 watts so that we can go to these three significant digits here and we multiply and we get minus 3.01 decibels. Okay, a negative gain is the same thing as a power loss. We decrease the power. Whenever we increase the power we get positive gain we decrease the power, we get negative gain in terms of decibels. If we leave the power the same, then the gain is zero decibels, which is easy enough to figure out. Say we start with 100 watts per square meter and we end up with 100 watts per square meter. The log of one is zero, 10 times zero is zero. So, decibels give us a way to express relative power. And more importantly, they give us a way to express the relative intensity of a phenomenon like visible light, radio waves or sound waves or other disturbances according to the way we humans perceive the change. As things work out, three decibels, plus or minus three decibels, represents the smallest amount of change that we can usually perceive if we do not anticipate the change. If we do anticipate the change, then the smallest change that we can uh, detect is approximately plus or minus one decibel. So as things work out, say 10 decibels is a pretty significant change, but it's not really, we don't see it as anything like a tenfold increase. That is why, for example, if you have a solar eclipse and nine-tenths of the sun's disk is covered by the moon so that you only see one-tenth of the sun's visible disk shining that look, you'd think that it would be awfully awfully dark outside because the sun's only a tenth as bright but in reality what you're seeing here is a 10 decibel decrease in the sun's brilliance. That isn't all that much. It might seem like you're wearing sunglasses instead of looking at the scenery with your naked eye, but it isn't going to look like moonlight or anything like that. In fact, the sun has to be pretty much altogether covered before you really see a significant difference during a solar eclipse. That's why when the moon finally does cover that sun in an eclipse, the, the, the onset of darkness is dramatic and sudden. That's just a little review of one example of how the decibel is used in science. Stan Gibalisco, signing off until next time.